in a footnote, I believe, in Thomas Kulka Kitchen Art, he talks about uh, you know the, the motifs of kitsch, uh, family, death, love, the basic human situations, which can perhaps be further analyzed in terms of Jungian archetypes. And then you have the he, he says he it, says that he okay. talks about Jung. Yeah, and it, I don't think he Kulka. yeah yeah I don't yeah. think he really understands you know the gold mine he's opening up. Like, yeah, yeah. Perhaps this has some something to do with archetypes and the whole basis of human existence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I think that I think that at that time when he wrote, I think even at that time uh, Jung was a little bit laughed of. Well, this is the, the ni scholars. ninety. You mean five? you mean that he was left. Out? Yeah, no, I think the people made fun of him mm -hmm. among uh, scholars. What, that what, is my understanding. Why is that? Because he was considered maybe a little bit of a mystic and yeah, yeah. maybe outside oh, of a scientific yeah, so. method. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so, so what happens is that this uh, literally, <laughs> these people from literature and movies and these things, they embrace him. Mm -hmm. So they come to, because among the scholar community, the fine people, He's not taken very seriously, but so these people from literature and movies, they come and, uh, and they talk with him and they, these two guys whose names I forget, but we have the book somewhere, they convince him to have his name on a book they are going to write about archetypes in movies and literature. You know that book? No. The Jungian archetypes of uh, stories. Okay, no. I mean, it's no. everything from Brother Grimm's uh, fairy tales mm. to... Mm. Yeah, what not? Mm. It's a collection no. of those. Uh, yeah, and uh, Jung, Jung and has stories? the preface. Jung mm. has the book, a short text in the beginning. He didn't want to participate on the rest of the book, but he let them use his name for it because he supported their quest in a way. Mm. But I think it's uh, this whole thing about archetypes is really the the, the, the starting point because <clears throat> you know as we've been talking about in the first different uh, segments in the cave, the whole thing that happens with the invention of fine art is that it rejects the basic premises of the Greek or Roman way of thinking. And one of them being the whole idea of the archetypical or some kind of eternal perspective. That and the sentimental, uh, uh, sentimental depiction of these archetypical images. And I think, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's what, what I, um, I really understood, I understood that when I made that first cave comment video, how you have this whole implementation of critical theory now, which sort of just strengthens the whole Hegelian idea that you have to reflect your time. But then the only alternative to that is to emphasize the internal perspective. And that goes through archetypes. And that's why I'm, I'm thinking about how can Kitsch help a classical figurative painter or a novelist or whatever? Well, it has to do with understanding, well, that's what happened to me at least, through kitsch, I understood what art was, actually was, not what I hope or dream it is, but what it actually is. And that this has separate values, and that's the great term by Hermann Brock, you know, the, the value system of art, or the value system of mm. kitsch, and you understand that these are separate worlds. And there's so many who, who get this, oh no, I'm being accused of being unoriginal or whatever, and then they fold, because they do not see that, you know, live and let live, these are two different value systems. But if you're aware of what kitsch is and what art is, then you can choose where you are. Well, I think that uh, that's the that's a kind of a Jung approach to psychology. I mean, to mm. finding that differenci differentiation. I mean, to to recognize the the opposites. I mean, mm. to understand where art is, where kitsch is, yeah, um, and and so on. So um, if you if you put yourself into that uh, place in which you can actually Define the differences between mm. each other, and sometimes the similar things between mm. each other. Mm. That's where uh, I think uh, the whole conversation should go. Mm. On. Yeah, but it's almost as if, if we go back to Jung, it's almost as if, not to the full extent, but sort of the the early, how should I say, the master student between Freud and Jung, is it reminds me somewhat of Plato and Aristotle because. Aristotle was the student of Plato, mm. but uh, they uh, eventually went separate ways philosophically. And uh, Freud taught Jung about, I mean, of course, uh, psychotherapy and these things and uh, the study of, human, of man. 
uh, and he was hoping that it should become some sort of science. I don't think it is a science yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> because a science uh, demands certain methods that can be tried out everywhere and gives the same results in a way. And in that sense, it's not a science yet. But they separated and I, I read uh, this book about archetypes, Rai mm. which I'm sure you've read yourself, and he writes something interesting about his separation with Freud. Uh, his perspective on it. Yeah. And that was that they were studying dreams. And he had noticed that Freud was very occupied with what is the person, my client, who has this dream? What are they trying to hide from themselves? The uh. dream is trying to tell them something they don't want to admit for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a negation in a way. Yeah. He is um, trying to find what are we trying to <laughs> suppress. Mm. And that is when uh, Jung went away from him, according to himself, because Jung's, Jung thought that that wasn't enough. You need to also study what does the dream mean? Not just what are you hiding, but what does it mean? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, no, and also the this, this story about the, the person, the individual, the, the person that he's... Uh treating or, uh, that, or listening yeah, to. Yeah, but that is in a way the art and kitsch mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the art is a, a negation project. It, it says that, okay, if you, are, if you are making a love scene or something, then that is a sort of a prejudice. You're not being free. Mm -hmm. It's something you're mm -hmm. suppressing. Maybe you mm -hmm. haven't had enough love in your life, etc. Mm. Uh, but Jung comes in and says, no, what does it mean? Well, another way of saying it is that is one thing is who are you, in a, then the other perspective is, is who are you in a cosmic context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of, of course, later mm. the critical theory people says that uh, that <clears throat> values are not within us; they are taught. Well, they are culturally continue, yes. uh, dependent. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we have to, to to reach the complete freedom. We mm. have to. We have to say no to these archetypes. Yeah, yeah. And that, uh, if you, you know, starting off with talking about Jung and Freud, if you're talking about sort of the mental health issue here, then uh, obviously, uh, you know, it, it, this is a fundamental thing with Campbell, that where he talks about how if you do not get your life confirmed, you know, seeing your life externalized and get it confirmed in that way, worst case scenario, scenario you go uh, schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And the only way to uh, realign yourself with uh, you know, living in the, in the reality is through the archetypes. Mm. Yeah. And that's precisely what the whole concept of fine art says that you should not do. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, th that's why it's so important that you, you, if you go into kitchen, you can understand that you've wanted to make some kind of eternal images, not necessarily conscious. Like I've heard, met these painters who painted a portrait and they, oh, no, it's too sentimental. And sentimental is just another term for eternal, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. person. And then he painted a white line. It's, there's many variations of that story. Yeah. But if you understand, okay, there's such a thing. Kitsch has certain um, uh, signifiers, being sentimental, being timeless, uh, uh, the depiction of the individual, how they react to each other. Then you, you understand also that, well, okay, from the art perspective, that is not allowed. From the kids' perspective, that is allowed. So, which camp do I belong to here? And that can release a hell of a lot of energy. Instead of trying to behave nicely, you can use it to to create yeah. images in that. Uh, yeah. You know, when you but you, you 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 talked about something before um, yes. about this um, thing about having a, maybe your own uh, about the style and uh, yeah. your uh, your own voice and and and, and those kind of things. Um, in a way, Kitsch doesn't deny having or developing a character within uh, <laughs> learning a certain kind of structure. You, I, um, you know, if you learn the rules of the game or you le learn the rules of composition or how to build properly a story, and uh, then you can uh, let the character of the the in a way, the space in which you want to talk about the the structure or the you how did you you talked about um, how can you call it the subject or the adhering to a form a form 
Yes. Yeah. So it depends on the form or the, the, the space that you're going into. Um, that is when your character can come out. Thank you for checking out this video from the Cave of Apelles. If you want to watch the entire segment, head over to caveofapelles.com slash donate and become a $5 patron. Then you can access our masterclasses, bonus material with our guests, painting videos and more.